1 Peter 5 8 states, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, the words of this verse are not fiction to me. I believe in the devil, I believe in Satan. I believe that daily we face a real spiritual battle in our lives. And even in my earliest years, even before I understood what it meant to believe in God, I believed that there was something evil out there. I may not have been able to name it, I may not have been able to describe it, but I knew there was something evil out there. And if you look at the news today, you know that evil is alive and well in this world, I'm afraid. I believe in the devil as much as I believe in a real and living God. As 1 Peter states, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now that verse might lull you to sleep because you might look at that verse and say, well, if he's a roaring lion, it should be obvious where the devil is. We should be able to spot the devil at any time in the tricks of the devil, right? Wrong. The devil may roar like a lion, but the devil is also stealthy like a lion. And the devil does one more thing that makes it very hard for you and me. The devil doesn't play fair. 2 Corinthians 11.14 says, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. I love that word, masquerades. It describes perfectly how the devil works. The devil convinces us that wrong is right, down is up, and what we are seeing is not what we're seeing. No, Dawson, you don't get a Dorito, I'm afraid. <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like he's in... <laughs> Oh boy. Masquerades is a word that perfectly describes how the devil works. The devil tries to convince us that the opposite is true. And what is the best tool in the devil's toolbox? Temptation. Why is temptation so tempting? Because it doesn't look like temptation. We might not even call it temptation because we don't comprehend that it is temptation. Do you know how to kill a rat? You don't set out a bowl of rat poison to kill a rat. That wouldn't work. A rat would not go to a bowl of rat poison and eat the rat poison. Nothing about it would appeal to the rat. So how do you do it? You set out poison masquerading as food. That is the concept behind the rat poison you purchase at the store. Rat poison is actually 99% food and 1% poison. If the rat were to die right there on the spot, what does it say to other rats? Don't eat this. This is bad stuff. It's like a sign standing there. So the reason it's only 1% is it allows the rat to die slowly somewhere else. The rats don't associate the food with the poison. Now if the rat coroner were to come along and say we need to do an autopsy here, he probably wouldn't say that the food caused the death. He'd say poison caused it, but we don't know where it came from. It would be something else. And the devil does the same thing. He masquerades as something good. The devil masquerades as something attractive. The devil masquerades as something we think we want. He goes after our desires. Jesus in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 tells us that those who believe in God and have Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior are like salt of the earth. You are salt of the earth in Matthew 5, 13. The problem is the devil knows that. The devil is fully aware that we are called the salt of the earth. And so the devil has to be creative. As believers, we're supposed to figuratively be eating healthy food. We're supposed to be praying, reading the Bible. We're supposed to study up on God, learn about God. The problem is there is an industry out there built specifically to tempt us away from healthy food. And the devil is doing the same thing. Whether it's giving in to our sin or eating a Dorito, both will leave us feeling empty. Back in 1964, the lowly Dorito was invented. At the time it was created, the goal was to have an endless variety of Dorito flavors. And if you go into a store, you'll see there are lots of different flavors of Doritos. However, there is one flavor that has risen above all the other Doritos in the Snack Food Hall of Fame. And that is the Nacho Cheese Dorito. The devil uses some of the same techniques that they, the people who created the Dorito used to get us to eat the Doritos and to keep eating Doritos. Now, please do not walk out of here and say that Doritos are the devil's food. I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> this is a very creative thing that they did with Doritos. But I think it's important that we understand temptation. The more we understand it, the more we can see through it. And the more we see through it, the less we are tempted. 
I want to understand it so that I am not confused or tricked by it. I want to rule over temptation, and I don't want temptation to rule me. We sometimes get the wrong idea. We think that God is the one tempting us. We think God is the one putting us in these positions where we're placed, where we can actually be tempted. But the Bible doesn't say that. In James 1, verses 13 and 14, he says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. It is us. It is our desire. It is what we want. We are enticed because of what we desire. God does not entice us. It all begins with our own desires and wants. And one of the first places it starts is our eyes. Look at the Doritos in your plate. The color of the nacho cheese Dorito is created from three artificial colors. There are two yellows and a red. Why? Because research has shown that we are attracted to bright colors. So a Dorito is sort of like eye candy. It is pleasing to the eye. I don't know about you, but just seeing a Dorito makes my mouth water. Suddenly it is the only thing on my mind. It's all I can think about because that's what I want. That's what I want to taste. Some of you right now are having trouble with your saliva. The little drools beginning to come down the side of your face because you're struggling with the fact that you've got two Doritos sitting right in front of you and you already know what it tastes like and therefore you want it. You desire it. Each of us is tempted by something different. Something different gets at us and the devil knows that and the devil goes after those things that are most tempting to us. Now, obviously, research has gone into what these are and how these work. So let's go ahead and, and take a bite, if you like. You don't have to if you don't want to, but go ahead and you can eat one of the chips if you feel like. Aww, I didn't want to. Anyway. Now, one of the first sensations that you get when you eat a Dorito is salt. As I said before, Jesus calls us to be the salt of the earth. And salt in and of itself is not a bad thing. It's not sinful, but just like anything else, it can be if overused. I have a problem with salt because of kidney stones, therefore salt is pretty much sinful for me. But salt can be used for good and can be used for bad. If you look at the list of ingredients on a uh, Dorito container, you'll discover that salt actually appears three times. An ounce and three quarters bag of Doritos has nearly 25% of your daily needs of sodium each day. Just a little tiny bag, 25%. So you're pretty much done just by eating that chip. You're done with salt for the day. You can't have any more. That's it. That's how much salt is in there. That is a lot of salt. And the salt in the nacho cheese Dorito is used for a specific purpose. It delivers to your tongue what they call a flavor burst. It dissolves instantly when it hits your mouth and sets off the salt receptors in your tongue. Immediately your tongue sends signals to the pleasure center of, your, center of your brain. And what is it telling your brain to do? Eat another one. Eat more chips. Well, guess what? It's the same way with the devil and with sin. Even a little bit can make us feel good. Maybe you decided to look over at a friend's paper while you were taking a test. You copy a few answers. You move from a C to a B. So it feels pretty good. So the next test, you write the answers on your hand and you move from a B to an A. The sensation of pleasure can lead you ever deeper into sin and ever deeper into that bag of Doritos. The fact is, guilt is washed away by pleasure. There's something, about the create, there's something that the creators of the nacho cheese Dorito know very well. When a snack filled with fat melts in the mouth, your brain responds in a very interesting way. It thinks the calories have disappeared when the fat melts. Therefore, you don't feel full even though you are because the fat melting in your mouth instantly tells your brain you're done. You, 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 it's already gone. It's digested. It's finished. And you don't feel full in the process. And there's an actual scientific term for this. It's called vanishing caloric density. There are a few foods like Doritos that do this to you. Cotton candy. You can eat cotton candy and feel like you can just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat if you can handle the sugar because it doesn't make you feel full. Cheetos are work that way as well. And this one was well, sort of surprising to me, but it makes sense. 
Coca-Cola is the same way. Coca-Cola very much has the same effect on you. You can keep drinking and drinking and drinking and not feel like you're fill, filled up. That's the thing about Doritos. The pleasure of the Dorito overpowers your brain. You don't even realize what's happened until the entire bag's gone. The same is true of our spiritual lives. When we start doing wrong, it doesn't seem like a big deal. But slowly we're pulled in, not even realizing what's happening to our lives. So now, let me ask you, when you had that Dorito, what flavor did you taste? What flavors, did a flavor stand out to you? Because Doritos are made in such a way that you're sort of hit with all these flavors at once. No single flavor actually stands out above the others. If one flavor did stand out, you would eat a few and be done. The reason? A specific flavor will make you feel full. But because all of the chip, the chip has had all these flavors put into it, they're carefully mixed so none stand out on its own. It makes you want to eat more. If you were to have a bag of rosemary chips, doesn't sound good to me, but if you were to have a bag filled with chips that were flavored with rosemary, how many would you eat? Not very many. <laughs> yeah, some, people would, some people wouldn't even pick up the bag in the first place. But if you, have, if you have a specific flavor that stands out, there's something that happens in the brain that tells you you're full very quickly because that flavor is so strong. But in nacho cheese Dorito, all, Doritos, all of the flavors are mixed together. Therefore, not one stands out to get you. Sin has a way of sneaking up on us in such a way that it doesn't stand out. It disappears into the little corners of our lives. We rationalize what we're doing. We say, oh, this is only a little thing. But if we take all of those little things and put them together, it isn't trivial anymore. Those of you who have touched your Doritos, look at your fingers. You may notice a little bit of what researchers call gold dust from the <laughs> chips. <laughs> this is known as, uh, there, there's actually an urban dictionary term for this called Dorito finger. <laughs> the urban dictionary de de uh, defines Dorito finger as the medical condition you get when you have just finished poling up, polishing off a family sized bag of nacho cheese flavored Doritos and you have all of the cheese on your fingertips giving them an orange color. Apparently it's a medical condition. The only known remedies are sucking on your finger until the cheese comes off or wiping off the cheese on your pants. <laughs> the uh, Urban Dictionary even gives an example of Dorito finger in common usage. Person one, hey man you want to play rock paper scissors? Nah bro I got a bad case of Dorito finger. <laughs> Even Dorito Finger is part of the overall plan to get you to eat more chips. The blend of the flavors are ground into the tiniest particles before they're applied to a nacho cheese Dorito. That finely ground powder fills every nook and cranny on those chips. If you look at those chips, every part of it is covered with that powder, that gold dust that gives you the Dorito Finger. This intensifies the experience and makes sure that the most amount of flavor possible hits your tongue as you eat the chip. This is why we end up with the Dorito dust on our fingers. And they even know this, when you lick the dust from your fingers, it makes you want another one because it intensifies the flavor when it's not attached to the chip anymore. Sin in our lives is the same way. It fills in all those nooks and crannies of our lives and gets on our fingers. But it doesn't just get on us, people notice. People notice when you have Dorito finger. When I go over the speed limit, little eyes are peering from the back seat. They see what I'm doing. There's a little bit of Dorito dust there. When we're in the grocery store in the produce section and slip a grape into our mouth and think no one's watching, it's a little bit of Dorito dust. In that moment when somebody gives us too much change at the checkout, and it's a big enough amount that the cashier's drawer is going to be off at the end of the day, and we figure, well, that's their mistake. That's a little bit of Dorito dust. When we cheat on our taxes, just a little, oh, you know, I, I know I shouldn't be writing this off, but I think I'm going to do it anyway. A little bit of Dorito dust. Doritos are created in such a way that once we eat that first chip, we want more. It really is an amazing creation. It really isn't easy to overcome the Dorito. And it isn't easy overcoming sin in our lives. But I believe there are three steps that can make a huge difference difference. And we've sort of worked through that first step right here this morning. The first is to name it. As I said, if we recognize what a Dorito is doing to us, 
that we have the power over it. The same is true with sin. Ask God to help you find those nooks and crannies in your life and reveal those areas that you need to have cleaned up and get rid of the Dorito dust in your life. David in Psalm 32 gives us a picture of what this means and it happens to be a verse that's perfect for this time of year. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Name it. Name it. And then admit it. Don't let it control you. Overcoming takes place when we decide that we're not going to do it anymore. Those little sins in our lives that we have scattered. When we make the decision to name it and then admit it, we're making a step to what the Bible calls repent. It literally means that you're walking one way and you decide to turn and go the opposite way. How can I stop eating Doritos? Well, in my case, it's by not having them in the house. <laughs> It's a known fact if there are chips of any kind in our home, they will end up in my stomach. <laughs> so how do we stop this? By making sure there are no chips in my home. I have to admit it. That's the case. I have to admit that's the only way. And there's usually chips in the house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Riley, stop talking. <laughs> Ephesians 4, 22 to 24, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true, true righteousness and holiness. Name it, admit it, and finally, give it to God. A Dorito is a powerful, powerful thing. It is amazing. This little invention right here is quite amazing when you think about what they've done with all it is is a snack food. And yet when you're done, you want more. They know that. That's why they designed the Dorito the way they did. A lot of research has gone into making that a very desirable thing because they want you obviously to buy more. Sin is a powerful thing. Satan is researching every way and every day to sneak into your life. And overcoming isn't easy. We have a battle on our hands, and the only way the battle can be won is by giving it to God. I began this message with a verse from 1 Peter chapter 5. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. I love the rest of this section. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. It's easy to give up. It's easy to give in. That bag of Doritos in our house doesn't last long because it's easy to give in. Sin is so easy to give in. The hardest thing to do is to overcome. The hardest thing to do is to overcome the Dorito. The hardest thing to do in our lives is to overcome sin. But if we name it, admit it, we understand it, and then give it to God, it makes all the difference in the world.